people there are leaving the country because Al-Qaeda and ISIS is taking over. It is complete bloodshed seemingly happening overnight. They are beheading soldiers, leaving them in the street as a warning. They've already instituted a really um, archaic form of Sharia law. And Obama has announced today that he's not going to be sending any ground troops into Iraq to help out, but he will be considering strikes over the coming days. And of course, the corporate media is just salivating at the prospect of going to war, the thought of reintervention in Iraq, because of course the mainstream media is the propaganda arm of the war machine. And our troops, all of our veterans who fought that war in Iraq are saying, what is the point of all of those lost lives? It's worse now than it was before. And of course, all of this just coincides perfectly with Obama promising that America is going to pull out of all that foreign war. We're going to focus focus a little more here at home, which is kind of an ominous thought now with all that we're going through currently. We don't really, I don't really know if I want to close off the borders because then that means, yeah, we can keep illegals out, but it also means that they can keep us in. So that's a very frightening thought. But of course, what the lamestream media is not covering is just how the U.S. is arming both sides of the conflict there in Iraq. Now, this article is uh, by Zero Hedge up on Infowars.com in its entirety, very detailed there. But coming up, Alex Jones is going to break this down. It'll be all-encompassing just to really catch you up to speed on exactly what's going on there in Iraq. You're definitely not going to want to miss it. He blows it wide open. So stick around. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super male vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off super male vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your super male vitality. InfoWarsLife.com. Friday the 13th, 2014, has turned out to be a horrible day for Iraq, a terrible day for Syria, the Middle East, and the rest of the world, and especially the Christians of Iraq. They're having their heads chopped off or are being shot in the back of the head, and the images are showing up in international newscasts worldwide of Christian men, women, and children having their heads hacked off, 800,000 fleeing Baghdad, to Crete and other cities, major cities across the nation of Iraq, have fallen to the ISIS al-Qaeda group, publicly funded by NATO, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, the United States, and France in the last three and a half years, attacking Libya, Syria, and our ally Egypt. This is part of a long-term deal with Saudi Arabia 
to turn the entire Middle East over to the Sunni-based Wahhabist system. Now, to understand what's happening currently, we're going to, in a few minutes, go into some of the history uh, of this because it's hidden in plain view. But because the population doesn't know history, they're doomed to repeat it. Most Americans know Al-Qaeda was founded by the United States government back in 1979 by Zbigniew Brzezinski. That was the name of the computer program at the CIA called The Base, or in Arabic, Al-Qaeda. Fast forward, we're told they attacked us on 9-11. Al-Qaeda is a real group. They are terrorists. They're funded by Saudi Arabia. They do attack people. But they're doing it for the criminals that work in the Western governments as a destabilizing secret army to cause civil wars, stage terror attacks, so the West can take our liberties, spy on us, secretly arrest us and disappear us, torture us under the NDAA and Patriot Acts that both parties have supported. I'm going to go over some of the history and proof of that in a moment. Kurt Nemo has a big article out tonight with all the links and proof at Infowars.com. Now, going back three and a half years ago, Western bases in Iraq, Associated Press, Reuters, you name it, were funding radical Islamists out of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and other Wahhabist-held areas. And the media said, is it good to be funding groups affiliated with al-Qaeda? They're not affiliated with al-Qaeda. They are al-Qaeda. They fly the flag of al-Qaeda. They are Wahhabist out of Saudi Arabia. It is the exact same thing. And they've now gotten medium and heavy weapons from NATO and the West, that's what Benghazi was about, to attack Syria. That's not denied. And that's why Ted Cruz and others said we shouldn't be al-Qaeda's air force over there. And it stopped Obama from a full-scale air bombardment to turn Syria over to the very same group that couldn't take over Syria right across the border. I'm going to go over the map in a moment. Who've now raced into Iraq, been left alone, been given weapons, who are now in a modern blitzkrieg with heavy weapons and thousands of brand new Mercedes uh, Toyota trucks, you name it, attacking and coming in and, again, literally executing police, military. I've got all the headlines here. We're going to be putting some of those on screen. Let me just go over some of these headlines before I break down the big picture and tell you the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. AP, America's being evacuated from Iraq Air Base. Jerome Corsi's on the radio show today. Contractors contacted him. Uh, 200 of them are surrounded in a fort, in a base, by Al-Qaeda, swearing to kill them. The Al-Qaeda is real. It, it, it's, they're being turned loose and armed by NATO. They will kill Americans. That's the number one target. Then there'll be bigger defense budgets to fight them later. This is very sophisticated. Even the low-level Al-Qaeda folks don't know this. It's the higher levels that are in a, and, I, and I have government documents and articles we're going to break down showing that in a moment from two other conflicts. Continuing, Iraq crisis. Baghdad prepares for the worst as Islamist militants vow to capture the capital and are now entering the capital. And the police are fleeing and just throwing down their weapons because they were already run by the West and infiltrated. They've been told to basically stand down. Here's another one. ISIS butchers leave roads lined with decapitated police and soldiers. Battle for Baghdad looms as thousands answer Iraq government's call to arms and jihadists bear down on capital. This is unbelievable. The Iraqi government wasn't doing what they were told by the globalists, so now they send in al-Qaeda. Uh, ISIS is now imposing Sharia law, just like they did in Libya, and even our own government admits Libya is much worse than it was when Gaddafi was in. And the executions are just continuing by the thousands an hour. Uh, it's being reported. Al-Qaeda flags, just as in Libya, are being hoisted up everywhere. Our own government double-crossed our allies in Egypt a few years ago, removed Hazi Mubarak, who was no angel, but he had stability. Christians were at peace. You could visit the country that was basic freedom. Compared to now, Al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood were given power by the West. The military turned against that, overthrew them. Our own government has been backing Al-Qaeda, trying to overthrow and kill the Egyptian military. Remember that when you're at the airport and they want to grope your genitals because of Saudi Arabian terrorist? Remember you're the terrorists, not them. They say the Tea Party is now the number one enemy, not Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda has got our Air Force drones already bombing over there, supposedly against them, and it's all just for show so they can act like they're not arming them. And speaking of that, I have a couple articles that deal with that subject. This is out of the uh, Wall Street uh, Journal. 
That's also in the Daily Beast. Iraq's terrorists are becoming a full-blown army. A Pentagon, Iraq rebels may have captured U.S. military equipment. The Hill, folks, they've given them the weapons in Benghazi. That's the cover-up for this. I mean, it's admitted. So there is literally a blitzkrieg taking place right now. 800,000 refugees fleeing. And, oh, they got those Stinger missiles from our military bases. Uh-huh. In Iraq, they found them on the side of the road. You found that robbed money from the bank, you know, in the, in, in the back of a shoebox in the alley. I mean, this is incredible. But U.S. secretly flying drones over Iraq, but it's not stopping al-Qaeda. Oh, this is how dumb they think everyone is. And they'll say, oh, Obama looks like a fool now that Iraq's falling apart. It's his job to look like a fool. So the establishment can put all the blame on him. And he's terrible. I don't like him. But the point is, he's just a puppet. This is all meant on the grand chessboard to turn the whole Middle East over to Saudi Arabia, just as British intelligence has been doing since 1901. That's mainline history. I'm going to break that down here in just a moment. Uh, Congress says Iraq vets are hopelessly watching as their gains are lost. They were there to kick out the secular leader, Saddam Hussein, who'd been a CIA officer who was set up and told to attack Iran and Kuwait. I'm not defending him, but he was a CIA officer, not an asset. That's declassified. Look it up. He was put into power in 79, set up later to then remove him because they had women going to college and not wearing burkas and rock and roll on the radio and put Al Qaeda in charge of the whole region. But that was too obvious back in 2007, 8 or 9. So you've got to do it later with a Saudi Arabian proxy army. And that is in the Belfast Times mainstream news breaking down the Saudi Arabians bragging that they have been funding the entire time the insurgency in Syria, Libya. I mean, that's on record. That's all over mainstream news three years ago. But they think you're dumb and don't remember that. Well, the Belfast Time, Iraq crisis, Sunni caliphate has been bankrolled by Saudi Arabia, where 15 of the 19 hijackers came from, to then attack. Think about that. The country that had nothing to do with it. And now, 12 years after 9-11, two invasions of Iraq, a million dead Iraqis plus, Al-Qaeda is being given the country to murder every Christian they can get their hands on and blow up mosques of minority Muslim groups that are peaceful. And it's all meant to cause a total Sunni-Shiite civil war between Iran and the proxy forces that are all over the Middle East in Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon. This is the stated clash of civilizations the Wolfowitz Doctrine, the Brzezinski Doctrine, it's bipartisan. This is what Wesley Clark talked about, the plan to take all these countries. You do it by civil war. What's Obama want to do now with a gun confiscation plan he announced? Australian-style total confiscation last week with an executive order they're looking at doing. They want to cause a civil war here, saying the Tea Party are terrorists. This isn't a game. This is rule by proxy army. Now let's go over some of the history of al-Qaeda. Then I'll go to the map, show you what's currently happening. Undisputed. Lawrence of Arabia is just Hollywood's packaging of it. It really started in 1901. You can read it in the encyclopedia. They took a 200-square-mile area held by some really hardcore bandits who'd been robbing caravans for thousands of years, the Wahhabists. Uh, they were bandits before they were even Muslims, before Muhammad even came along. And these are the folks where Islam started. And they were given weapons to take over from the old empire that the British were fighting in World War I, the Turks. And so during that whole period, they then sent in the Wahhabists to finally overthrow uh, the folks that were in Syria at that time and controlling most of the Middle East. It was a British Empire takeover of the Middle Eastern Empire of the Turks. Now, fast forward, the Turks are now under British control, under globalist control, in a power-sharing deal with NATO and the EU, and so they're attacking uh, Syria today. So it's different today, but you can go read about the history of that. So this has always gone on. Al-Qaeda didn't start in 1979, officially it did, but it really started in 1901 under the first king of Saudi Arabia. It took him 30 years, 1901 to 1931, to take over the entire area. Now they're going to be given Iraq, Iran... They're, they're being given everything. 
They're being allowed to invade and take over with jihadists as far south and 